This is meteorologist Mark Molnar, as always. I want to thank you for joining me for the special December 2021 through March 2022 winter weather outlook. I break all of those big snowfall anomalies down for you. Who's going to see the most snow this year? Will it be like last winter? Will it be like some of the previous winters in the last decade or two? Will we see a record-breaking snowstorm? Well, we'll take a look at the factors from La Nina, Siberian snow, historical trends, and all of the upper level patterns regarding temperatures and the pattern itself as well. And don't forget to subscribe for future videos and hit the bell button so you're alerted when I come out with any one of these updates. Well, let's get right into it. All right, let's take a look. La Nina is in full swing and it is a little bit stronger than previous winters La Nina. So we're borderline right near that one, negative one degree Celsius here. And as we take a look through the, as the winter progresses, we'll weaken the La Nina just slightly. It'll still stay a little bit stronger than last winter, but there it is. Uh, La Nina is going to be the prevalent uh, driving force this winter. And if we take a look just south of the Galapagos Islands here, all the way through November and into early December, you can see how that uh, uh, temperature anomaly was strengthening here as the darker blues really take hold. And let's take a look at the rest of the ocean here. You can see there's that dark blue really taking hold across the East Pacific. La Nina is definitely going to be the predominant force. But I wanted to bring your attention here off the U.S. East Coast in the Gulf of Mexico. Will some of this really, really warm uh, temperature water for this time of year, will it help feed in and create some decent East Coast snowstorms. Well, let's take a look. All right, let's briefly take a look at the weather pattern before I show you the snowfall map that you want to see of the breakdown of percentages of the anomalies. Uh, let's take a look at the Pacific Northwest. We're starting with this polar jet and this Pacific jet. Mountain snow valley rain will be above average here. We have the high pressure that typically pushes this pattern uh, polar jet to the north. So we get a pretty big ridge here in the Gulf of Alaska. And that pushes the cold spells up and over this ridge into parts of the Pacific Northwest, Rockies, and into the northern plains here. And you do want to see a, a slightly above average snowfall or even more across uh, Siberia, Asia, and into northern North America here. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing at least slightly above average to get the weaker polar vortex to help break off pieces of it and head southeast to help create the snow that many of you love. And the pattern for storm tracks will be pretty active here across the plains and the Ohio River Valley heading into interior northeast here. So that'll lead to a variable NAO index. I think it'll be more negative than not. So more negative than positive. And that will help to create any blocking that we may need. Now, I don't think blocking is going to be the predominant force that creates a lot of the snow. I think uh, you can even have a pretty progressive pattern here and still end up with a lot of snow on the north side of these systems. But it'll help any coastal that gets going and slow it down a little bit. I don't think we're going to see a tremendous amount of coastals and nor'easters, but I do think we'll see at least a pretty good couple of nor'easters here and coastal systems in the northeast to help bring some of these snow totals up, especially in interior sections, and help at least get the big cities to at least normal snowfall in the northeast. So that could be pretty interesting. As always with the La Nina, you see the bullseye of the heaviest precipitation across the upper Mississippi River Valley, Ohio River Valley, the Midwest here, Great Lakes, and into parts of the no northeast here in New England. So that's where the upper level low normally sets up with this type of situation and systems pinwheel around it. You can get some pretty interesting scenarios here. So definitely not boring uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Across the south, we're dealing with above average temperatures, drier, less stormy, and that nose of warm air goes up the east coast, Delmarva, and even as far north as southeastern New Jersey. Now, I don't think that's going to cut snowfall totals down terribly here in parts of the mid-atlantic i think you'll end up with normal and i'll show you next here in the snowfall map all right snowfall map this is the map you've been waiting for let's get right and dive right into it here you can see pretty much the southern half of the country pretty well void of snow that's pretty typical of la nina we get into the pacific northwest this is where things get interesting all of those parading storms heading inland here uh, keeping snowfall in the Cascades 10% to as much as 25% above your average here in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, and Montana. That stretches east, uh, northwest of Denver, about a 10% here in the Rocky Mountains up to the Dakotas, but it's back east here. Now, 
Normally for East Coast snowstorms, you'd like to see this line a little bit further closer or on the coastline. Uh, we will see some coastal huggers and some nor'easters and coastals. It's not going to be the big blockbuster type coast one right after another, but I think we'll see some pretty decent coastals here, a few of them at least. So I have most of the area in the northeast here at a 10%, the suburbs of New York City. Uh, Connecticut, Hartford, Connecticut, Boston, Massachusetts, even Harrisburg, suburbs of Philadelphia, northern Philadelphia there, Pittsburgh, getting in on 10%, State College, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, and even up into the Binghamton area and Albany, about 10%. Concord, you're right on that 10 to 25%, so right around 25% above your average here. Much of Maine is as well. We'll get some of those coastals intensifying, and you'll also get those uh, systems heading in from the Great Lakes that you'll be on the overrunning northern uh, scenario here. So eastern Maine, you'll get in on some of these coastals bombing out. But here, this is where things get really interesting. All of these, if you look, the, the Ohio River runs right here. This is just north of the Ohio River, the 10% line from central Missouri all the way up into eastern Ohio and Pennsylvania. This is where things, on you'll be on a lot of the northern stream of these systems. So eastern Iowa, Northern Illinois, Northern Indiana, Northwestern Ohio, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, these areas into Northern New York, Northern Vermont, New Hampshire, Southern Ontario, and Quebec, 50% above your average. And in the dark blue here, 25%. So let's take a look at some of the areas here. Chicago, Illinois, Detroit, Michigan, Buffalo, New York, just North of Syracuse, Syracuse here in the 25%. So right up towards Oswego County, up towards uh, Burlington, Vermont, these areas, you'll be in the 50%. Erie, Pennsylvania, you're in the 25%, as well as I said, Syracuse, just north of Albany, Concord, Cleveland, over towards right around Indianapolis here, 25% above your average, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So there's going to be, in the next couple of frames I show you, there will be a precipitation anomaly map, and it pretty much runs across this entire area. So this is going to be like the battleground going on. This is why I have... This area, you have the cold air coming in from the northwest. You have the warm air coming in from the south. And even when you get some of these lows moving east, maybe some coastal redevelopment, so you'll have moisture coming in from the east. This is going to be the access of the heaviest precipitation this winter. So things are going to get very interesting. It's not going to be boring. I mean, down across the south, yeah, most likely you'll see some occasional cold air outbreaks but we're not looking at a winter that's going to be blockbuster here across the deep south it this is mainly up here in parts of the northern tier of the country so let's get into the particulars on why i think this area is really going to see the biggest chance for this 50 percent above your average snowfall let's take a look and i follow that snowfall map snowfall anomaly map with the temperature anomaly map this is really going to feed into any snowfall anomalies we have and here it is i think across the pacific northwest heading from west to east this is the big story we'll have some uh polar and arctic air being pulled down especially into the eastern part of washington and uh, oregon here into uh, parts of idaho and the northern plains so this polar jet stream will be instrumental in helping to push uh, any pieces of the polar vortex across parts of the Pacific Northwest and eventually across the northern Rockies and into the plains and eventually pieces of it across uh, the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and the Northeast. So I do think we'll see above average temperatures as usual here as this follows this uh, La Nina pattern here across the south, southwest, and all the southeast. And there it is into southeastern uh, New Jersey. But I don't think that will reach too far to the north and to the east here. So definitely normal here into the uh, regular shades here uh, but here if we have the negative right around negative uh, half a degree Fahrenheit here now that might not seem like a lot but if you average that out over three months or so uh, through the end of December through March that is pretty significant so we'll see below average temperatures here uh, parts of the northeast especially interior northeast Pennsylvania let's see New York northern New England and then extending westward here uh, towards the plains, northern Missouri, that's going to be instrumental in helping uh, aid some of those systems to produce heavy snowfall. And there it is across the Great Lakes, looking anywhere from about uh, one degree Fahrenheit here in the dark blue, and there uh, one and a half to as much as 
three degrees Fahrenheit along the northern plains here, but averaging out to about negative 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit across, there's that bullseye. The northern part of the bullseye of that precipitation bullseye, which I'll show you the total liquid precipitation anomalies in the next frame here. So uh, as soon as we're done with this one, so there it is. That is pretty significant here. So some of these colder outbreaks will be able to travel along the northern part of this polar jet stream, and that is instrumental in helping push the colder air back east here. All right, in breaking down total precipitation, this includes liquid and frozen if you melt it all down uh, for this winter precipitation departure from average. So it's quite obvious here from California all the way through the uh, South Texas and most of uh, the lower half of Texas for that matter into the southeast. This is going to be below average precipitation. So now we've got that part out of the way. Here it is across the Pacific Northwest. You get to see just how much of the total precipitation this dark green is 50% above your average. That's pretty significant. And 25% above here in the in the medium shade green and 10% above average in the lighter green. So we have a significant part of the northern tier of the country in at least 10% to 25% above average. Now look at this. This is going to add insult to injury to the pattern that's already been continuing from the fall here across parts of the upper Mississippi Valley into the Ohio River Valley and then parts north and west. You see here, we have a pretty well big bullseye of 50% above your average. And this has been pretty prominent here in the northeast as well. This continues over from your summer pattern where you've had well above average rainfall. So you see in a couple frames previous, we weren't seeing 50% above average snowfall here. It was more in line up here uh, from eastern Iowa, northern Illinois, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, into southeastern part of Ontario and Quebec, and then into northern upstate New York, into parts of northern New England. So that part there was about 50%. So that, that aligns. So south of that line, you had about 25 to maybe as much as 10% above your average snowfall in this section, and into parts of the lower Ohio Valley, into this section. So you know a lot of this liquid that's falling, it's 50% above average, is going to be in the form of rain. So you're going to have snowstorms and rainstorms. That's a given. So it's going to be, this is definitely the battleground going on here in a La Nina pattern. This type going into this year, this winter, it's definitely going to be quite interesting here. And on the northern edge, as I showed you a couple frames before that, the snowfall and that 50% above average, that is where it's going to get very interesting. So this is definitely not a terribly boring winter. Uh, many people have thought that maybe this would be a boring winter, but I think there'll be areas that it is pretty exciting. So um, this is definitely something to look forward to. I know it's been a slow start. It's definitely, that is definitely no lie. It's been a slow start going from November into December. Uh, being that, you know, we finally got into winter time here, the first of the winter. Um, so here you have it. This is going to be pretty interesting and cannot rule out some coastal lows here. I think some coastal lows will help feed into some of this above average precipitation, but we will have a significant number of low pressure systems ejecting here out of the Ohio and Mississippi River Valleys. And hence why you have all this precipitation here on the northwest side. All right, I wanted to leave you with this, uh, the CFS model, uh, the medium range forecast model. It uh, gives you a rough sketch of what's going to happen over the next couple weeks. And the interesting thing is we put that into motion. This is snow cover across North America. And there is Eurasia over here, Asia, and then Europe. We have a lot of snowfall here, especially in Siberia and Northwestern uh, North America. And as you know, that always helps to weaken the polar vortex and helps break off it, pieces of it and head southeast and that's what you want to see for snowfall now, we see a decent amount of snowfall throughout much of canada and look at that the continent of asia and even europe over here that is pretty remarkable northern europe we put this into motion through the rest of december there into january look how the snowfall really starts to build here you start to eat, look at that out west pacific northwest that correlates to uh what we've been seeing happen uh, with the anomalies that we're expecting based on historical analogs as well as the trends that happen with a La Nina pattern such as this strength. And 
you see it's by about the time, take it with a grain of salt because it's going pretty far out, uh, but this is the medium range forecast model, so it does better uh, statistically than some of the other forecast numerical models. In the short term, you see we really start to get the southern extent of that snowpack really starting to extend south come the second week of January and heading on into that last week of January there. Now, I don't know if I believe that, the snowfall line getting as far south as the Gulf Coast states. That might be a little bit overdone, some feedback. But this does a pretty good overall picture. Significant snows continuing across northwestern uh, North America into Siberia, strengthening that. And look at that, you have a lot of snowfall, a lot of snowpack building up here across North America. All right, and taking a look at the CFS for height anomalies. And once again, this takes us through just shy of the end of January. It takes us through the first quarter of winter, at least here. So it'll give us a general idea of what we can expect. Take it with a grain of salt because, you know, the, it, the, the whole detail, you're not supposed to look at every little detail. But as you can see, just around Christmas time here, right after Christmas, we start to get ridging in the east. We get to, to get troughiness here across the western part of the continent. But the big idea, the takeaway I want to show you is high pressure really in control here across the Gulf of Alaska. That helps strengthen these cold air cells that push into western North America. Now we do have some blocking forming up here in the first part of January. It's interesting to see we have ridging as far uh, east or southwest as the east coast of the United States. But look how the bottom really starts to fall out here towards that first week of January. This is what I was talking about here. We have two big cells, one on the west coast, one on the east coast. And this will help promote some pretty decent snowstorms if the pattern holds true here. And good blocking up here in Greenland. Of course, you get ridging in between. That can be expected. So you have a lot of back and forth here. So that's why there's going to be a lot of extremes going on here on both coasts. And in the middle, that's where the battleground really takes hold. And look at that. Yeah, you even have some retrograding kind of going on here and a lot of troughiness. So it's going to be a very interesting winter. It's going to be a tug of war. So there you go. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern uh, Winter 2021-2022 Outlook. As always, I'm going to have updates throughout the winter. I'll have at least two updates a week going into winter here. Hopefully three updates I'll be increasing to. So to all those of you that are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell button so you're alerted when I come up with one of these videos. Also, don't forget to give my Facebook page some love at Media Mark. Also, Weather Northeast. You can also visit me on Twitter at Weather Eastern and right here at YouTube, Media Mark. Subscribe, hit the like button if you like the video. Question or comment down below. I love to read your questions or comments. Welcome to the channel.